Salesforce OAuth, SAML bearer assertion flow, and SAML assertion flow. Welcome to another episode in Steve's security series. Today we're going over more OAuth flows. Today we're talking about SAML bearer assertion flow and SAML assertion flow. They have almost the same name. They both use SAML, but they have different purposes and different nuances. So we're gonna go into the details of each and help explain it. First, we're gonna give context again about the different OAuth flows. So we have single sign-on flows, which are meant to be used by the browser, talking to Salesforce by a human being, using either direct login or single sign-on. We have OAuth flows, one of which not using the browser, could be a mobile app, hitting the API with a user. That would be the new, used to be um, user agent flow. Now it's being suggested web server flow with PKCE. Um, then we have a, a human being working in a browser hitting a third-party web server. And in that case, the third-party web server acting on behalf of a user then can direct to the login page for the user. So this is a user-involved third-party service. Now, additional flows, we would have just a straight integration user um, who has fixed credentials calling into Salesforce from a third-party server. We then have um, what we're focusing on today, which is a client system that wants to act on behalf of a, of a user, like delegated user, um, and want a designated user and act on behalf of them calling the API with their credentials. And there's a number of ways we can do that. JWT, which we've talked about in the previous session. And today we're talking about SAML bearer assertion and SAML assertion flow. So this is a server acting on behalf of a user, but the user is not directly involved. In this example, where I'm following along my beer garden analogy from previous videos, we have the beer, the resource server has a secure data. It's protected by an authentication server. And the third party client is the burger house. But in this case, the user is not interfacing directly with the burger house. The burger house may have standing orders where they could order and get the data on behalf of a user. Um, and in this scenario, what, what could happen for the SAML bearer assertion flow is that the client, the burger house, could create a SAML request and digitally sign it with a shared certificate that was shared between the Burger House and the authentication server. And then they would pass it across to the authentication server. The authentication server would receive the um, SAML request, verified signature, and then present an access token on behalf of a designated user. So that way, depending on the SAML request, it could the Burger House could access the data from any number of users. And if we look at the actual flow, this would be where the client would create a SAML bearer assertion, sign it with the shared certificate, present the assertion and the auth flow to the auth server, and then the Salesforce auth server would verify the assertion, um, checking the digital signature and a number of other attributes of the SAML assertion, such as like date timestamps, date validities, designated target. So there's a number of attributes on the um, on the the X the SAML certificate, the SAML assertion, and then it would return back the access token to the client, and then the client would be able to use that access token to get data on behalf of the user. And there's some good details right here on the SAML bearer assertion flow. And it talks about creating the SAML bearer assertion. Here's an example. There's digital signatures involved. There's, and then here is the request to the OAuth endpoint, sending the grant type and the assertion. And this needs to be encoded base 64 there. So this is how you would use a SAML bearer assertion. And the key element is that this was created on the client. Now going to the second one, this is a SAML assertion flow, slightly different name. And in this case, you may have a pre-existing 
SAML, um, I, like an identity provider that is set up with Salesforce as the service provider. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna be taking the SAML from the identity provider and presenting it to the auth server. So the SAML isn't created by the Burger House. The SAML could be created by the identity provider and then presented um, to the authentication server. Now, a power of this is you don't need to have a client app already created. However, there are some intricacies in the fact that there are details that the SAML certificate created by the single sign-on needs to have very specific elements, um, specifically around a target audience restriction and some other settings. So it can get very sensitive and you need to decide if this can operate. A key element would be is if the Burger House, if you did a single sign-on, we're able to re-grab the SAML, authentic, um, SAML assertion and present it to the auth server. It's not being created by the Burger House. It's being taken from the identity provider. But it is more sensitive and may be more challenging to get this configured. And in this flow, some mechanism, not designated in the primary flow, you're going to get the assertion from the IDP. You're going to present that assertion. It'll be valid by the auth provider. And it actually goes to a slightly different endpoint. It's an endpoint designated by the, um, the single sign-on. And then it'll return the auth token. You don't need a connected app. And here's a slightly different flow. This is the SAML assertion. Um, it talk goes through the details. It goes through a special OAuth token endpoint different than the primary OAuth endpoint. And you'll then send in the word assertion, the browser, and then the key element is that you're gonna need to take your assertion, base64 encode it, then URL encode it, and then send it in. And it needs to be valid. And again, there are challenges when faced with getting the audience type. So this can be more sensitive and a little bit more challenging to configure. So to summarize, if you're gonna be having a server calling Salesforce on behalf of another user, and there's no user involvement, you could either use JWT, which we've talked about previously, or you could use SAML, either the SAML bearer assertion or the SAML assertion flow. One is where the client, the SAML bearer assertion is where the client builds the SAML request and signs it, talks to the Salesforce auth server using the connected app. The other is where you're able to obtain the SAML um, assertion from the IDP if that Salesforce environment is set up as a service provider and you present it there. Now you don't have to set up the client um, the connected app, but there is more sensitivity about getting the IDP to have the right settings when you present um, that SAML assertion. So these are all tools in your toolbox when you're doing OAuth client to server on behalf of a designated user when the user is not involved. You know, there may need to be some pre-approvals by the user to enable this. So there are nuances you're gonna have to dig into, but these are tools in your toolbox for setting up types of integrations that act on behalf of a particular user. Now, I hope this was helpful. We've been uh, sampling some SAML and join me again. Same bat time, same bat channel. Make sure you subscribe to Steve TechArk YouTube channel and go to www.stevetechark.com and have a great day.